the Chef's Pantry. I'm Anna Rossi and I'm so excited to take a deep breath with you now that we made it through the holiday. Are you guys still full from the day of feasting? Well, in true Chef's Pantry form, we're, we're eating again today and it's going to be delicious. So if you're someone that just loves all the flavors of Thanksgiving and you want to preserve them and savor them for months to come, you're adorable. I see you and I have some great ways to do just that. And if you're so over everything that came with the Thanksgiving table yesterday, but have a ton of turkey in your fridge, I have a soup that you are going to love. Okay, but let's start with the flavors of Thanksgiving. So here in two ways, I have some great little dishes on the go that will get you through weeknights for as long as you wish to come that are using probably what you have on hand, stuffing, mashed potatoes, a really good dark meat turkey that somehow I managed to save, and some cranberry sauce. So we're going to do empanadas or gobbler pockets and egg rolls using these simple ingredients. So should we start with the empanadas? My secret is using puff pastry. So I have tried many a puff pastry and the one I love the best is Pepperidge Farm. It comes in the freezer section. Usually it's tri-folded. This has had about 20 minutes at room temperature to thaw and on a clean work surface, I'm just going to dust a generous helping of flour because puff pastry is built on a base of butter and as it starts to warm, it's going to get a bit sticky. So spare yourself the stress and flour your work surface. Um, and then this has a little parchment paper um, delicately dividing the trifold. So very carefully, after it has thawed, I'm able to unfold it. And then you're left with this beautiful square. Um, but I wanna give it a little roll with a rolling pin to just sort of bind the crease that has naturally occurred in um, the storage and then also create a little bit um, bigger surface to work with. So on a nice floured rolling pin, I'm just going to ever so gently roll out the puff pastry and then using a sharp knife, create four little squares. So you could use a bowl and create little circles. Those would also be adorable and kind of give you like that uh, pot pie sort of feel. But I like today using the squares because I won't have any leftover waste with the puff pastry and I'm trying to get rid of the leftovers. Okay, so now a, a dab will do you. I have made the mistake where I can be a little too aggressive in how generously I stuff these, um, but really you're just gonna use a couple tablespoons of each ingredient. Um, so here I have a little bit of cranberry sauce left over that I'm gonna use as a base. Stuff them with your favorite things. If you have a really good roast vegetable, maybe a sweet potato that you love, add these. Um, think about your favorite flavors of the day and chances are you've hopefully loved everything that came to the table. Um, so this is as good as the sum of its parts. Here I have some cornbread stuffing. Um, there unfortunately was not any sausage chestnut stuffing left over. My mother-in-law's famous stuffing yesterday, but that would be so good in here. Um, some buttery mashed potatoes. Smashed style with that little pop of red skin. So good. And then I love the dark meat. White meat I'm gonna use in a little bit in this soup that I have planned for you. Um, dark meat, when it bakes in it um, or gets fried, in the case of the uh, egg rolls, all that juice just in, it comes alive again and it does so well as a leftover. So a generous pinch and pile of really good thigh meat in there will be what we need. And then let's get an egg wash going. We're gonna use this to bind as well as to base the exterior to give it this beautiful glow. So one egg and a splash of whole milk. You could also use heavy cream and then just a generous whisk. A little basting brush is so helpful. So here I'm just incorporating the yellow and the white, and then your painting skills will not be judged only by your tummy here. So I'm gonna paint um, the two sides of the square here to create a sticky glue-like texture to give a really good seal. And then I'm just going to fold over gently. And I want to work my way from the filling out to the edge to try to press out any 
extra air. You want to do that gently by pressing. You don't want to um, puncture the puff pastry like with a paring knife um, because that will release the steam and juice and alter the texture of your puff pastry when you are baking this. And then to just further accentuate the bind, I'm using the prongs of a salad fork to just go around and create a really good seal like you would um, like a Hot Pocket or a homemade Pop-Tart, all those beautiful things. And then a parchment lined baking sheet. I love these quarter sheets. If you go to a restaurant supply company, um, that's the size that they are officially. And they uh, come in so handy for like dinner for two, just like this. Now I'm gonna add a little more baste on the outside just getting in all the nooks and crannies and anywhere the egg wash touches will be altered in color. It will become golden. Um, it'll have a glossy like finish when it comes out of the oven and it will be fantastic. That's just like the mark of true gourmet. And then before I put these in the oven, I wanna give them a little kiss of Malden sea salt. I love the crunch, I love the texture, it's beautiful and it's easy to add just that little kiss of gourmet right there. So these would go in the oven for 400 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes until they're puffy and golden brown and so delicious. Now I'll set those over here and let's switch gears and talk about another really fun filling option that's a great way to reinvent the flavors that you have on hand. Egg rolls! Oh my gosh, so easy. I find these skins in the produce section. They're like by the refrigerated salad dressings and they are easy to work with. Um, so they've been dusted in a little bit of cornstarch, making them really um, easy to work with. They're not sticky. I have, <laughs> I have a leaf in the fryer. It's cooking al fresco for you. Um, and some canola oil. Uh, mix a little pure olive oil going on high. I want to bring it to temperature um, and aim for around 325 to 350. Um, so again, pack it with your favorite ingredients. I'm going to start with a nice smear of the cranberry sauce. Let's see if I can get two going at the same time. Make room on the cutting board. A little bit of cranberry sauce here. And I'm going to work on the diagonal, so corner to corner based on how we fold. And again, all the good stuff. A little bit of stuffing. I'm just gonna create a nice little pack, almost like a little sausage roll in how I'm gonna like create like a log going down the center. So good. The potato and everything is just happy once again to be together. You could easily pop these in the freezer before you put them in the fry stage and then have them on hand ready to thaw and fry on a chilly winter night, right? And then how about the turkey meat again? Um, I love deep frying the, the dark meat turkey. It just gets so juicy. It's like it was made for it. And then, bite my fingers. And then here we use the egg wash again. So I'm gonna bring that in and then I'm just gonna paint the four corners, just like that. There you go, nice little generous glue, edible glue. And then I'm gonna start by folding across. I wanna be firm, but I don't wanna be mean because this paper is delicate. So it, it has a bit of a give to it, um, but it doesn't need much to really come together in like a pretty little parcel, just like that. And then here again, fold it, the first tip across the center, then the sides, into the middle, just like a pretty little envelope. And then let's tuck it. And then you can kind of shape it into like a nice little round um, tube when you get it into your hands. And then let's put them into the fry oil. Already starting to bubble, that means it's the perfect temperature. And this will take just a couple minutes. One of the most amazing things to have on hand to dip your egg rolls in is some leftover gravy. So here we have some turkey gravy from yesterday and I'm just gonna put that in a little dipping bowl. Get that ready for a decadent, crispy, delicious bite. Okay, let's check on the egg rolls. Nice, I love this golden color. I'm starting to see form on the outside. Look how beautiful that looks. And I like that snap crackle pop. 
and just give it a little baste. And then right on hand, I have paper towel ready to catch the egg rolls when they come out so they can drip off any excess oil. So the empanadas, one of my favorite things to do is make a bunch of these gobbler hand pockets and freeze them. We have a VacMaster vacuum sealer that is amazing. These drop into the deep freeze. They're great for a simple weeknight dinner for two. And one of the things I like to do is with a Sharpie, write on the bag itself what the baking instructions are. So just a quick reminder that I need a thought, baste it with the salt and egg wash, bake at 400 degrees, but make your life easy and don't expect that you'll remember when it comes time to pull them out. Speaking of pulling them out, look at these. So these were some I started about 30 minutes ago. You can see that they get beautiful and golden and puffy and anywhere that the egg touched the surface is that beautiful caramel amber color. So good, so yummy. Let's lay these out here and then check on the egg rolls. Nice, beautiful golden on all sides. Let's just give them a little rest on this. Woo. Hot, drop the heat. And lay them out here. And then for serving, they're great like this, but I like to also serve them out along the diagonal. So give them a little cut. Oh my gosh, look at that. Pillowy mashed potatoes, delicious stuffing, juicy dark meat. Everything has just come alive in a beautiful egg roll, crispy skin. Yeah, that looks so good. Okay, and now the test, a little bite. Ooh, they're hot, hot, hot. Mmm, oh, oh. Sometimes things are better the second day and no one's in your kitchen stressing you out. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna dive into the empanada and we come back, get your soup hats on. We're gonna make a delicious chicken pozole verde. No, turkey, turkey pozole. Oh my God. <laughs> You'd think I'd be full of turkey by now. We'll see you in just a few. Welcome back to the Chef's Pantry. We are embracing the leftovers of Thanksgiving today in the Chef's Pantry. So we just blew out some really traditional flavors with some egg rolls and empanadas that do well in your freezer to really extend that flavor profile of Thanksgiving. Um, but now let's have some fun with this turkey. I have a lot of leftover meat, but I want to totally reinvent the flavors um, and just take advantage of the protein and transform it into something really delicious. So we're gonna make a turkey pozole verde. It's a uh, pozole is a traditional Mexican soup traditionally made with hominy. It's served really thick and like a stew, um, but I'm serving it today two different ways. One a little bit traditionally, and the second way is actually over some arepas. Um, so sort of Latin inspired and a bit of a melting pot delicious both ways. Um, so here are my ingredients. I have some great white meat turkey. I've gone ahead and gotten a start on sauteing some yellow onion and carrot. Carrot was optional, but I had it calling my name in the refrigerator. Um, traditionally, pozole is made with hominy, which is corn, um, but chickpeas or garbanzo beans make a really great alternative if you can't find that. I have some crushed garlic, some cumin, some coriander, um, some chicken broth, and then um, what makes it verde or green is salsa verde or green salsa. You can find this in the taco section of your market and it brings so much flavor. Um, so let me crank up the heat and let's build this out. Um, so I wanted to cook the onions and carrots until they're tender and translucent. And then while things are nice and tender in there, I'm gonna go ahead and add a head of garlic. Garlic is probably one of the things I'm most piggish about when I'm cooking. I just, I just love it. I love that it brings actually a little bit of heat. It adds a lot of robust, big flavor. Um, and, and something that's sturdy like a stew, 
I'm gonna go for it. Also, I feel like it's good for our health, and don't we want things that are immune boosting this time of year? Um, so the garlic is sticky, it's just infusing right in there, and before I go ahead and add the broth, I'm gonna add my spices, my dried cumin and my dried coriander. It, um, if you want to pack in a little bit of heat, this would be a really great time to add some jalapeno or habanero pepper. Um, for me, I want this to be super approachable for my six and eight year old, and I don't want them to say it's spicy. So no, not too much heat today in here. But when before you add the broth, adding your spices, this gives your hearty vegetables a chance to really soak in that flavor because they're thirsty. They're looking for something to soak up. Um, and then I load, loads and loads of the white meat. Any type of turkey meat is great. I also, when it's not Thanksgiving time, love using um, market rotisserie chicken in a dish like this, and it does really well. And then the salsa verde. So salsa verde, the base in this is tomatillos, um, which are bright, they're acidic, they have a really nice, smooth flavor. This has some jalapeno and some cilantro in there. And the salsa verde is one of my thing ingredients that I love keeping in my pantry because even that mixed alone with an avocado is like a great weeknight two ingredient guacamole. It's so versatile. And having things in your pantry that are multifunctional, uh, that give a lot of flavor without extra ingredients are really great. And then a generous dose of the chickpeas. These are two cans of the chickpeas. So good, we'll give that a little stir and already it's having this like mouth-watering, stew-like consistency. And I love that little pop of the carrot color. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add the, the turkey stock in here. And this could simmer, you could do, do this in your slow cooker and let this go low and slow for a couple hours. I'm gonna let this sit in my little crusade for uh, about 30 minutes just to start to readjust the turkey meat to get rid of those rosemary, orange zest, garlic flavors and soak in this new flavor profile that we're building in the pot. So one of the things that I think is so fun about the pozole style of super stew is serving it with different fixings. But to add a little hearty base as another option, I'm gonna go ahead and make um, some arepas. So here's some pan. I get this in the international section of the supermarket. And this was something that our dear friend Liz from Colombia made for us when she had Thanksgiving with us two years ago. Uh, it was a hit, um, just a simple, woo, look at the, look at the breeze, it's very fine cornmeal. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and whisk it and then add the extra before it blows away in the, the wind. And this is something that you kind of do to feel until it's sticky and it starts to form a dough-like consistency. And then I'm gonna just add a pinch of kosher salt and I want it to be super cheesy. I think a nice cheesy pull will be a really great pairing for all that delicious tender turkey meat that we're working on. And you can see as we start to mix it, it starts to thicken a little bit and it's starting to look like, I don't know, almost like a Play-Doh. And then we're gonna go che really cheesy here because I don't think anybody ever said too much cheese. Okay. So this is ready to form into some balls. Two cups of the pan will make about 10 arepas. I'm gonna go ahead and form this. Woo! <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and form this. And uh, into like golf ball size patties. I'll work on this. In the meantime, here's a sponsored segment from America's Deals and Steals. And come back hungry. I'll see you in a few. You guys, I have the coolest product for your kids that I have seen in over a decade. As a parent, I am blown away. It is called the Pixicade Game Builder. Now what this is, we all know our kids are spending oodles of time on tech, on screens, right? And we always battle about taking it away. You can't be on it as much. Video games are bad. No. 
They're actually really great for innovative thought, creative thought, stimulate brain stimulation. Video games are actually not what we should be fighting against. It is a fantastic tool for your kids. And these books by Pixicade encourage kids to draw whatever picture they want. Imagine whatever they want. You know that the imagination is limitless at this age. Create that picture, snap a picture of it, and it turns into a video game like that, that they can play and share with all of their friends. It is so cool. If I had this as a kid, and you know I'm a designer, I would have made thousands of these. These are like that world you get lost in as a kid and your parents can't pull you out because you are imagining so hard. And then on top of that, it makes it come to life. Anybody can do this. You don't need to know how to code. You don't even have to be that tech savvy. We are offering an incredible offer today. Take advantage of the special offer. Give this as a gift. If you are an aunt, an uncle, a friend of the family, be the cool one. You can go to adeals.com. In the nick of time, we have our turkey pozole verde on the stovetop and our arepas are hot off the skillet. These have been sauteed. Three minutes aside and a couple tablespoons of butter on medium high heat. They are cheesy, they are delicious, and now let's build out our feasts. So this is a turkey pozole verde served two different ways. Um, so on one plate, I'm gonna build out our arepas as the base. So here I have, let's do three. Um, this is going to be nice and hearty. I'm just gonna give it a little dusting of salt. Actually, I'll do that here while they're warm. Those are good for nibbling on. Um, and then here, let's check out our pozole. So this is the traditional Mexican stew instead of hominy, uh, which would be traditional. I used chickpeas and it is aromatic and so delicious. I love smelling the cumin and the coriander. And then for the arepa side dish, I don't necessarily want all the soupiness. I'm gonna go more for like that stew-like consistency. So on top of these little delicious corn pancakes packed with cheese, we're just gonna do a nice little serving. Mm. And the arepas are gonna soak up all that delicious juice. I'm gonna give a little wipe here and then how about dress the plate with just a little touch of cilantro just like that and now for the more traditional serving of the pozole stew i'm going to go for all that delicious broth that turkey has soaked up all this del delicious new flavor the carrots are going to add a, a really nice little bit of crunch and the chickpeas have a really great meaty structure that holds up well and something that you simmer for a bit of time. The thing that I love about a dish like this is all the fixings. So here are some really fun things that you can add to the table. Similar to taco night, letting the family build their own is really a lot of fun. One thing that I love is a sunny side up egg on top, letting the yolk just run and create this really delicious, almost dressing-like finish in a soup like this that's so lean and brothy is really nice. I have some red onion here, uh, some sour cream, which will be great, especially if you add a little bit of jalapeno, some tomato, some chopped tomato, a little bit of avocado. I think the avocado would be really good on the arepa plate as well. So let, I'm gonna add a couple little wedges over here. And lime, that little blitz of lime juice is so good. Squeeze a little on top and then serve it with a wedge. And then for a little touch of crunch, how about some tortilla chips? These are great, almost like you would serve a chowder with oyster crackers. Adding a little crunch of the tortilla chip is a lot of fun and a really nice texture contrast and then a little bit of the fresh cilantro. It's almost like a salad on top. This is what the doctor ordered. So we have the arepa base with the turkey pozole verde and then more traditional style done as a, as a soupy stew. Now the test, let's take a bite. Mm. Oh, this is what we needed this weekend. Oh, this is so good. That's, oh, I love the crunch of the arepa and you get a little bit of the cheese 
pull with that Mexican cheese blend in there. Mmm. Mmm! One soup, two different ways, totally different experiences. So delicious. Yes. Okay, I'll see you next week. Come hungry.